Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. How the hell are you? Here is your monthly reading for August, starting with the current transits. The Sun is currently at 17 degrees Leo, the Moon 18 Capricorn, Mercury 9 Virgo, Venus 27 Cancer, Mars 23 Taurus, Jupiter 8 Retro Aries, Saturn 22 Retro Aquarius. We have the full moon in Aquarius, Thursday, August 11th. It peaks at approximately 8.35 p.m. in San Antonio, Texas. Something different I thought I would try. I've never tried this before. Candle wax divination. So melting this candle. I make it fall over my skirt. Melting this candle into a bowl of water. I sprinkled some pink Himalayan sea salt in the bowl. What do I see for Aries? I'm seeing a really intense relationship that involves a lot of people. It's not just the two of you. There are exes and children involved in this. I'm seeing distance. And there's this dark rain cloud hanging over your head. You feel like there are too many obstacles. There's too much drama. There's too much conflict. And your communication tends to be mostly superficial, I'm seeing emotional distance. Very terse, sporadic communication. I'm seeing a lot of frustration, depression, anxiety, fear. Fear that this is not going to work out. There's too much noise, too many obstacles, too many distractions. You could be dealing with a cancer or someone who has a lot of cancer in their natal chart. The signs that are jumping out are Cancer and Scorpio. You could be dealing with an addict. This person is really independent, perhaps avoidant. Uh, they prefer to keep their problems to themselves. They don't like to burden people. They don't like to reach out for emotional support is what I'm getting. Okay. It's probably taboo to blow a candle out when you're doing something like this, but I'm going to use the same candle for probably all of the signs. I'm just that basic. Okay. Um, the Literary Witches Oracle Moon. 
So you could be all in your feelings. You're feeling especially raw and sensitive. Um, maybe check in, see where this full moon is going to hit your chart. Uh, what house is it going to fall in? So Aquarius is my sixth house, so the full moon, I don't know the exact degree, I have to check on that, but the full moon is going to be in my sixth house. Um, see what aspects this full moon is going to make to your moon, your um, Mercury, your Venus, your Mars. I rarely have the house to myself. This morning I had the house to myself because my ex took our son to orientation. He's starting his freshman year at this high school in San Antonio, so he went to orientation. I wanted to go, but I took some pills like at 3.30 or 4 o'clock this morning. I was just, I was out. I took some Benadryl. Um, and I didn't really need to go. So anyway, um, I was just crying, talking to whatever audience I have. There are some people who um, have a specific deity or ancestor in mind when they're talking, when they're making their petition, when they're praying, whatever. I was brought up Southern Baptist in Texas, so I was brought up praying to Jesus, but I've not considered myself a Christian in quite some time. I never really felt a strong connection to Jesus, the Jesus that I learned in Sunday school and church. So anyway, um, I've played around with different deities, and I've, I've played around with chaos magic and all of that. I've been practicing some form of witchcraft since approximately 1991. Got my first tarot deck in 1991, 1992. Anyway, um, and there's not one certain ancestor that jumps out or a spirit guide, an angel, none of that. It's very vague. I'm just talking. I believe that I have an audience and I'm just getting stuff out. So I was crying and talking and expressing my frustration my pain. Um, I go through about three journals a year. And I've heard that it's not a good idea to do shadow work in a journal. There should be a separate journal just for shadow work where you can rip the pages out and burn them or whatever. There's all kinds of ideas and various ways to stumble along this path. But mostly in my journals, I write down the astrological transits, uh, recipes, list, what I want to manifest. I did a candle spell, an apple candle spell a couple of days ago, and I got immediate results. It was amazing. Um, but we're all, most of us, I would say most of us are struggling with something right now. These are ass-kicking transits. The full moon is going to be conjunct Saturn. So with Saturn being at 22 Aquarius, I'm assuming the full moon is going to be around 22 degrees Aquarius, So because it's going to be conjunct Saturn. I was watching Pam Gregory. I watch her for all the full moons and the new moons. And she's just a great source of information regarding astrological transits and a lot of stuff. I have both of her books. I've not read them. I've got a lot of books that I've not read. Right now I'm reading Sutri by Cormac McCarthy. Okay. I don't believe 
that you have to be in a high vibration or a great place to do magic, to read the cards. I mean, if that were the case, I wouldn't get much work done. Uh, I have been dealing with depression since I was a kid. I've taken various meds, but I've not taken any meds since 2011. So the way I cope is with cards, crystals, meditation, writing in journals, creating like my ass is on fire, reading books, finding my best friends in books. That's how I deal with it. And I'm very lucky that I have a strong support system. My ex-husband, the greatest ally of my life. Six cards for Aries. Five of Coins, that's how I was feeling hours ago. I was feeling very Five of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. I'm feeling more Six of Pentacles now. Ace of Wands. Wheel of Fortune. My son, he's doing gameplay with his best friend. Ace of Swords. Knight of Pentacles. So we have the one signifier. You're feeling lonely. You're feeling like you aren't being supported. You're feeling like this relationship is pretty one-sided. You're giving. You're not getting much back. Um, you feel like you're not really making any progress. In this relationship it's it's stalling um, you're at a loss what more can you do you've made it abundantly clear to this person how you feel but you're not on the same page they're not they're not being emotionally available and lately it's just been very dull. You almost feel numb at this point. I was seeing Scorpio and Cancer with the candle, but with all these pentacles, three out of six pentacles, I'm seeing Earth. Um, they probably have some Capricorn and Sagittarius in their chart as well. They could have Sun and Scorpio, Mercury and Sagittarius, Mars and Capricorn, um, something like that but going beyond astrology this person is really complex and complicated they don't do well in a partnership because they are so independent maybe when they were a child their needs weren't met they had to be independent maybe there was some neglect when they were a kid and so the well that they draw from is pretty shallow. They feel like when they were younger and they reached out for help, there was no one there. No one helped. No one understood them. They had a very lonely childhood is what I'm getting. And so they don't really know how to be in an intimate relationship. They're operating at a deficit. They have a very dense pain body. Uh, most of us have been through something, but I feel like they had a really traumatic childhood and they don't know how to act in a relationship. They may come across robotic. You wonder if they have any feelings at all. They
they do, but their feelings are submerged. They're not really in touch with their heart chakra. Their heart chakra is closed off. That's what I'm getting. Please provide an energetic summation for Aries, three additional cards. The Emperor. So the casual observer looks at this person and thinks they just have it all together. They could be a high-functioning alcoholic, a high-functioning addict. They have a good job. Money's not an issue. Money's not a problem. But emotionally, they're a pauper. Emotionally, they're a peasant. Queen of Coins. The world. They could be going through a really difficult divorce that has just been dragging on and on for years in some cases. There could be a lot of money at stake. I don't know, but I see a lot of drama and a lot of conflict. So if this is your story, if it resonates at all, I would encourage you to just immerse yourself in the Ace of Cups. That's intense self-care. That goes a lot deeper than getting a mani-pedi or going to Fantastic Sam's and getting a new haircut, a new hairstyle, hair color. Uh, much deeper than going to the salon. Much deeper than just getting uh, a massage. Uh, turn off the noise. That's my usual Prescription, turn off the noise of social media, turn off the phone, just breathe in, breathe out, do some meditations, do some affirmations, write in a journal. Find some creative outlet and just purge. Technology being what it is, the world being what it is, a lot of us have this tendency to just go along and numb out. We numb out with the noise. And so a lot of us are operating at a deficit. We're not really connecting to our fellow human beings. There's this disconnect. And that's going to have to change. I'm talking about on a global scale. People are going to have to learn how to be human again or be better humans. Connect beyond technology, beyond the occasional text message. Um, there's going to have to be this kind of renaissance, I guess. Get back to basics. Like in the 1800s, in the early 20th century, the early 1900s, when people would create these mills together and they would go sit out on a porch and someone would play a, a fiddle or a, a guitar, a banjo, whatever, uh, people would gather around the fire and they would share stories and there was just stronger communities before we got into the industrial revolution and, and technology and all that and I don't like the way things are so I spend a lot of time in this little cave, this room with my books, and that's how I prefer it. I tried to do social media for years. I tried Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I just didn't like the way it felt. So I check in with myself on a regular basis. I have to. It's not a luxury for me. It's, it's a necessity. So check in with yourself. Nurture yourself. Turn off the noise. That's what I have for Aries. Hope that helps. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.